Hey everybody, Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Board for Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. I'm here to bring you another quick tie. It's also brought to you by Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Remember, all orders over $99 do ship for free. We want to thank them for sponsoring this for you every week. What are we tying today? We are going through the complex twist mouse. Actually a pretty simple pattern, um, great little mouse pattern, not too difficult to tie or to fish with. I'm gonna be tying out of my season five kit. If you still wanna grab one of these, you can head on over to our website at www.flyfishingborver.com backslash TNLS5 and you can pick yours up today. If you don't want to grab the full kit, you still can head over to Rock Mountain Fly Shop. You can order this guy here. It's gonna give you uh, six flies worth of material to tie up this mouse, uh, great little additive. Go to the link there and you'll be able to get linked to this video and see how to do it. All right, let's head on over to the vise and let's get going. You can see it here, this is our complex twist mouse. Now there's complex twist buggers, there's all sorts of complex twist uh, ideas, but this one's been added to the mouse and I think it's a great pattern. So let's go ahead and get that out of the vise. <clears throat> we are gonna get our hook set into the vise. Once you get that in there, let's head on over to our thread. What I'm using to tie with today is some UTC. Uh, this is 140, you want something a little bit heavier and this is in uh, bronze brown. Okay, really nice <clears throat> iridescent thread, I like this one. Let's go ahead and start our thread uh, just behind the eye. Work a little bit of a thread base back before we trim out that tag. Now on this fly, we are gonna show you here actually, we tie in a little piece of mono on the back. And what that's gonna do is um, it's gonna help this tail from wanting to foul back on the hook, okay? So the first thing we're actually gonna do before we do anything else is we're gonna tie it in. Here's a little bit longer one so you can see sticks out the back underneath there and it basically is just gonna prevent this from fouling on the hook. Okay, so in your kit, you're gonna have a few different pieces of this monofilament, it's just a heavy mono. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna lay it down. I want this to extend about half of the overall hook shank and length out the back of the fly. Okay, somewhere in there, it doesn't have to be super long. And I want this to be right up on top of the hook shank. So I'm gonna tie this in on top and I'm gonna lift up on that mono and just keep it on top of the hook shank as I go back and down all the way to the back end. And I want this to right about where the barb is at. That's where I'm gonna stop my thread wraps and you can see that just hangs out the back end. I can trim this out up here, get that out of the way. Make sure I have that secured down as well before returning back to just in front of the hook point. Now the tail of this fly is made up from a rabbit zonker. Okay, you could use squirrel as well. Um, lots of different, you could do color variations as well, but I like this one. This is actually a natural color and uh, has lots of those kind of guard hair colors in it as well. Works as a nice tail. I'm gonna actually gonna come in and I'm just gonna peel off just a little bit of that fur right at the tip here. Not too much, just enough to expose some of that leather underneath, okay? That's what I'm gonna tie in first. So I'm gonna move this back so that when I lay this on here, that hair starts about where the barb is. Okay, now I'm gonna put a few wraps down on top of that still, but that's where I'm gonna let it start. So I'm gonna start off by just taking a few thread wraps to secure that down. And then just slightly up onto the fur. I'm gonna go back over, just make sure I really bind all of that leather underside of the fly down. And that's gonna be our tail. Okay, so it's gonna hang out the back. Um, I want a tail that's gonna extend roughly a full hook length out the back, okay? Mice kind of have that pronounced long tail. So we're gonna roughly guess, okay, somewhere right about in here. I'm gonna come in with my scissors. I don't want to cut down like this on top, okay? That's gonna cut off all of the hair and the guard hairs. I actually wanna come through. Let's see if I can do it from the back end. Never gonna be able to do it. I'll show you. From this side, you can see my scissor come through. It's actually just on the leather itself. So I'm gonna poke my scissors through on just that leather once I got my measurement, come in snip it out, okay? So I'm left with the tail like so. Looks just like that. You can see if I'd have cut straight down, I'd have been marking where that leather is and all that hair would have just been gone out the back. Okay, so good. We'll leave it like so. Now we're gonna go over to our foam. We got some two mil foam that's cut roughly a hook gap in width, okay? Like so. I'm gonna point, or snip, sorry, a little bit of a point into it like so. And I'm gonna tie this in so that the back end of the square there where my point ends, I'm gonna have that meet where the hair does. Okay, I'm gonna lay it down like so. 
Make sure this stays right up on top of the hook shank. Secure that foam down. Now I'm just gonna move it back just a bit. I'm gonna take one more gather of that foam. Now I know that that's gonna have secured back. So when I pull this forward, it's gonna look like so. Okay. That's gonna stay off the back end. Just gonna hang out back there. Now we're gonna get to the complex twist portion of this fly. So what we're gonna add to it, we're gonna add two different colored feathers. Okay, we're gonna have a brown and a white. And we're gonna have a little bit of this polar chenille. Okay. This is, we're gonna twist all of these together with a little tool I'll show you. So first thing I'll just go ahead and tie in the polar chenille. Make sure I get that locked down. Trim out that little bit of a tag. Like so. And then I'm gonna tie each feather in from the very tip, okay? So I'm gonna pull back just a little bit, expose just the very tip of that feather. Tie that in right back up against that foam. I'm gonna double that over, get it down. And then I'm gonna go over and grab my white and do the same thing. I'm gonna pull this a little bit down here, expose that stem, tie that in, take some thread wraps right back against the foam. And then I wanna cover up those feathers, the tips of those feathers, that way I know that that feather is good and secured when I start to spin this. Okay, so once I've got those all secured where I want them, I'll take my thread forward. I'm gonna leave myself just a little bit of space behind the eye. I'm gonna throw a little half hitch in there. As you know, that's my save button. You can set my bobbin off to the side. Now I'm gonna pull down on my feathers so I can see how long they are, okay? To about there and I'm gonna trim or I'm gonna cut that portion heel so it's similar length. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this tool from Loon. Now I'm not too sure how I could do this without outside of using just a standard, maybe a gator clamp, okay? Attached to something like this and just spinning it, which would definitely be possible but definitely easier to use this tool here. Now this is the Gator Grip Dubbing Spinner. Okay, right here from Loon Outdoors. Great tool, I use this a ton. Not just the, uh, the dubbing spinner side, like so, we have another one here on the desk, I'll show you, that's got the dubbing spinner on it. This one is the clamp, okay? Go over to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, grab yourself one of these today as well. This is what we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna clip this down, making sure that I get the chenille, okay, the chenille, and both the feathers attached in that clamp. Just like that, secured, okay? Now I'm gonna treat it just like a dubbing spinner. I'm gonna bring it down and I'm gonna start spinning, okay? I'm not just gonna let it go completely wild because I wanna control how this kind of comes together. And you're gonna see it's gonna spin all of those materials together. I need to keep spinning until I get that all the way down to the base all spun together. But if I over spin it, there is the possibility of breaking those feathers off which I don't also obviously want to do. So once I get enough of it that I like, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna comb it out with just a little brush or some Velcro or whatever. I like to stand those, those up so you can see that looks awesome. It's got this whole real buggery appearance to it with that chenille on the inside. So now as I start wrapping, I wanna stroke and pull back the materials on every wrap, okay? Pull them back. Stroke them rearward, take my next wrap forward. Gonna palmer this all the way forward to the eye, doing the same thing each time, just pulling the materials back. Try not to, to um, unfortunately secure them underneath the wraps to the hook shank, but we will brush this out again and it will help all of those stand up. Okay, gonna keep taking this forward. Remember, I gotta leave myself just a little space at the eye to bring the foam back over and to put in a little bit of legs. So I'm happy with that there. I'll bring my thread back and I'm gonna secure that off. So thread wraps behind, thread wrap in front and repeat, making sure that's not going anywhere. Once I cut this, it's gonna let all the tension go. Make sure you don't cut your thread and just trim that out. So I got the rest of it on there. Okay, we're not gonna use. Now I'm gonna pull all of the materials back and I wanna create a little bit of a thread dam right here. Before I do anything else. Right at the eye, I wanna make sure I've secured the butts of those feathers down, that they're not going anywhere. Okay, so that's where I'm at right now. It looks pretty wild and all over the place. That's kind of the point. It's meant to look really buggy. I'm just gonna reach in there with this brush and just make sure I kind of pick out all of the feather fibers and that chenille. Then I'm just gonna give it a little comb rearward. 
And then lastly, I'm gonna comb down the sides because I don't want any of the materials on top as I'm gonna pull that foam back over. So I split that down, okay? Pull all the materials off the top, pull the foam over, okay? But first, aha, trick ya. Just before we do that, we're gonna add a couple of rubber legs just to the head here. Actually, silly legs, we'll call them. So you got some silly legs in your kit look like this. I'm just gonna take one full silly leg. This kind of works out to be the perfect length. Tear it off. I'm gonna fold it in half. And I'm gonna cut that loop at the bottom. And that way, when I tie this in, it's gonna give me two legs per side. So I'm gonna tie it in on my side first, and then I'll fold it over. Try to tie it in so we got equal portions of that of the legs on both sides. So I go like so. And I'm just gonna bring this one over to the other side and take a thread wrap over to secure it onto this side. You grab the legs, make sure you get them down. There we go. So now I got two rubber legs coming out both sides. And now I can bring my foam up. Make sure we got that up there. Bring the foam over. I'm not pulling super tight on the foam. I'm not trying to stretch it out. Just laying it on top. I'm gonna take thread wrap right there. Second one's a little tighter. Third one's the tightest. And I'm just gonna add additional wraps. Okay. Now I wanna leave just maybe a, a hook gap and width worth of foam out the front. So not a crazy amount. That's gonna kinda tip up and I'll almost work like a bit of a bill as it's on the water. Um, and then lastly, I'm gonna take just a little bit of this dubbing you have in here. You got this nice kind of brownie red dubbing and I'm just gonna take just a tiny, tiny portion of it. You guys got a ton of them in your kit, practically a whole pack. I'm just gonna spin it onto my thread, make a little dubbing noodle and that's just gonna be to cover up my thread wraps and to finish off this fly like so, okay? Once I run out of the dubbing, I'm gonna slide my thread down. Again, I'm just gonna reach over because I love this tool. I'm just gonna use my half hitch tool, just anything with a little hole in the end. Wrap over twice, over the eye, do it again. One more for good measure. You can add a little resin if you like, but I know that's not gonna go anywhere. Come in here and snip this out. The only thing I wanna do from here is I wanna make sure that my legs don't extend out behind the foam. So I'm gonna trim these off at the length of the black foam, just like so. There you have it guys, that is your complex twist mouse. Great little pattern, I challenge you to give it a try, whether you're fishing at night or not even at night, during the day, give these mice a try, try a few different colors, stick with something darker, try to keep it as natural as possible, okay? All right guys, I'm Tim Pepper here, Fly Fishing Bowl Real Fitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. I wanna thank you for following along. If you're part of the Quick Tie Squad, drop a comment, we wanna know you're here, like and subscribe to this video, and hit the little bell so you're notified every time we have another one out for you guys. Okay, until next week, I'm Tim Hepworth. We'll see you then.